Good evening, Bermuda, and welcome to the third episode of Education Connection, the online talk show where the Ministry of Education keeps the public informed about education in Bermuda. Tonight, we will feature Learning First, signature learning programs, and joining the Minister of Education, we have a group of talented and caring professionals in studio. We have Kenneth Caesar, Principal and School Transformation Team Member of Cedar Bridge Academy, we have Keisha Allen Smith, Director of Staff Development and Instruction at the Barclay Institute. We have Tamisha Darrell, Deputy Principal, West End Primary. Tamisha Francis Wainwright, Career Pathways Program Coordinator at the Barclay Institute. And leading the group this evening, we have Ms. Laurel Burns of Learning First. Now I'll turn it over to the Minister of Education, the Honorable Diallo Rabin. Thank you, Dr. Selassie, and welcome everyone. I just wanna take this opportunity to welcome you to our third installment of Education Connection. Tonight, I am extremely happy to have team members with me who are working on the implementation of the signature programs that will be introduced at Cedar Bridge Academy and the Barclay Institute in September, 2022. The goal of our education reform is to enable each and every young person to lead personally and professionally compete locally and contribute globally. To meet that goal, three things are being worked on. Structurally, this means a move from a three-tier system to a two-tier system by phasing out middle schools and introducing parish primary schools and signature schools. An education authority, which is being established as a non-political body to ensure schools best support young people to reach their full potential. The third piece of the puzzle is learning first which is what this group is representing. Learning First is a program of work that supports schools, parents, and the wider community to redesign the bits of education that need to change in order to make it authentically Bermudian. These changes will be adopted by the parish primary schools and the signature schools over the next five plus years and will inform how, education how, how our education system operates to ensure these changes happen. Now let's focus on the signature learning. Both schools and programs, and both the schools and the programs that they will offer, and the work being undertaken by our school transformation teams. The idea behind signature schools is to give students the opportunity to spend a significant part of their time in school following their passions, building on their talents, and developing the skills, knowledge, and relationships needed to achieve the career, further education, and life aspirations. Signature schools will still have a core curriculum that students will be expected to complete and give them the foundational knowledge and skills to meet, to compete locally and globally. This will also offer signature learning programs, which will be selected by young persons according to their interests and ambitions. A signature learning program will offer our students a range of modules on relevant academic subjects, appropriate practical skills training, individual and group projects in real world issues and challenges, internships and meaningful work placements, effective guidance on careers and further education with relevant accreditation. Following an engagement process with both senior schools, Cedar Bridge Academy and the Barclay Institute have selected their signatures and the school transformation teams have started to work on developing each signature learning program. The signature learning programs for Cedar Bridge Academy are STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math, and the Trades and Professions. The signature programs for the Barclay Institute are Health and Social Care, Financial, and Insurance Services. The school transformation teams are made up of a mix of teachers, school leaders, representatives from industry, and the community. They have been working on behalf of the system to grow the work of signature learning programs. Over the past month, the school transformation teams have been working hard to develop new blueprints and pathways for how young people will engage in the new signature learning programs, which they will be testing with you for further development today. Today, we will hear from and open up the opportunity for you, our Bermudian community, to ask questions of members representing our school transformation teams. These are the people on the ground working with our young people, their colleagues, parents, and the community to bring our signature programs to life. Now I will hand it to Laurel Burns, a member of the Learning First team, to introduce our first panelist. 
Thank you so much, Minister. I am pleased to have some of my colleagues here to discuss the hard work that they've been doing around the signature learning programs. I'd first like for us to have a look at the work being undertaken by the trades and professions team. And we are so excited to have with us today the principal of Cedar Bridge Academy, who is also a member of the school transformation team um, to come and talk with us today about trades and professions and the work that has been done so far. Principal Caesar. Good evening, everyone. I am excited to be here with you this evening to give you a brief overview of the journey we have taken so far with the Trades and Professions Signature School. So far, members of the Trades and Profession Transformation Team have been working to identify statements, learning statements that would allow us to focus on how we would execute our programs. Our learning statements are focused around pedagogy, curriculum, and assessment. I would like to give you one quick example of a learning statement when we look at pedagogy. And we would say that the Trades and Profession Signature Learning School will provide a space for learning through community partnerships to enhance student-centered learning and provide mentorship from skilled professionals working directly with both students and their teachers with the larger community. Not only are we looking at the learning statements, we have also been looking at infrastructure statements. And with this, we want to understand the type of space our students should learn in, the time it should take them to complete a signature learning, the trade and profession signature learning program, and the types of technology that will be needed for our students to be successful. If I highlight one aspect of time, when we look at the trade and profession signature learning program, we want to provide a schedule for students that is flexible and it will create opportunities for access to blended learning in terms of online and offline learning, but also in class and workplace opportunities. Another statement that we look at is the workforce system statements, and this pertains to our teachers and other educational professionals in the building. And in this case, we're looking at what type of professional learning do we want to offer, the leadership we would want within our trades and profession signature school, and ecosystems. So if I look at ecosystems, we're going to say our trades and professions signature learning program is part of a wide community support for trades and professions in Bermuda, drawing crucial support from industry partners as mentors and business professionals. And I think that is a very powerful statement to actually have everyone recognize one of the essence of our signature learning programs is that these are community programs. So we are looking for community partnerships as we move to educate our young people into the careers and professions of the future. One question that we may ask is, how would a student find their learning pathway? So what does it take? And more importantly, I am sure some of you are asking, what types of trades and professions will we offer as we begin to open up the program at Cedar Bridge Academy? So the trades and professions we have identified so far are building and construction, automotive, cosmetology, horticulture, culinary arts, design and materials. And I may add that as we are going on this journey, we are not limited to those six areas. However, that's what we ha have identified for the immediate opening of our signature school. Finally, I think it's important that we can at least give you an understanding of what do we want to accomplish with our signature schools. And one of the main objectives of our signature schools is that when our young people graduate, that they would at least have some opportunity to possess a certification. In this case, we give the example of City and Guild certification and also the ASE certification. And we have also, if you will follow the presentation, you would see that we are breaking down our conceptual frameworks into theory, practice, research, and also a final project. And we would also want to ensure that students do have ongoing relationships and access to the industries. I would just like to say with the Trades and Professions Signature Learning Program, it has been an exciting journey in which we have professionals within the education, community and also 
professionals within our larger community. And so far, we are putting the best of Bermuda's heads together to ensure that we can open up the best signature trades and profession school for our young people. At this time, I would hand it over to my colleague, Keisha Allen Smith, who will now talk about the health and school, the health and social care program, signature program. Ms. Allen Smith. Greetings, everyone. And thank you for this opportunity to share about the great work that we've been doing in the health and social care team at the Barclay Institute. And so just like Mr. Caesar had mentioned, we've started with some statements because we want to frame the vision for our work. And so just to pull out a few, I would like to share a bit about curriculum, time, and learning ecosystems. And so with our curriculum, we want to ensure that what we offer is relevant, what we offer is aligned with the needs in the community, and not only the current needs, but also the future ones as well. As we know, we're in the midst of a pandemic, and so the, the needs in the health and social care areas are changing rapidly. We also want to ensure that the curriculum we offer reflects what's needed for traditional healthcare practices as well as holistic ones. In regards to time, we're looking at you know, being creative and also moving with the change in times. And so our traditional school day might go beyond normal hours. We have had to move into kind of hybrid learning and flexible learning because of COVID. And so now that we have technology which is integrated, we want to be able to be flexible with the times that students might engage in learning in the classroom or online so that they can also have time to explore through experiential learning and be involved in some work placements. And so following that nicely is our learning ecosystems, because what we want to do is to bring or to take learning outside of the classroom. Too often it's just isolated and there's a whole world that they're stepping into. So not only do we want to bring more community partners in to talk about health and social care, but we want to provide the opportunities for our students to get outside of the walls of our building and get right into and get some hands-on experience in the work, working world. And so just to bring, because their statements were had a lot of words in it, so let's bring it to life and give some examples. So for a core or our learning pathways, what would happen is we're dividing our curriculum into different areas. So we will still have the core subjects that we already engage in, such as English, math, science, social studies. Um, we know that all of these foundational core subjects are needed across all schools. But then we also want to ensure that our students are getting the social skills and the study skills and the soft skills that they need to perform well in the business or sorry, in the health and social care or any jobs that they go into because we're preparing them for the real world. So not only do they need the academic skills, but they need to know how to problem solve, how to think critically and communicate. And so those type of things would happen during like advisory per um, periods where they would do some goal setting, learn their soft skills, some mindfulness for social emo emotional learning as well as opportunities to um, engage in college and career exploration. But then we move into our wonderful world of signature learning where students will have time to focus on that, you know, in class or theoretical knowledge. And those um, types of experiences would include students taking elective subjects in their signature learning program, also real world projects, creating portfolios so that they have something to present in interviews and also ensuring that they leave with some credentials as well. And then we have our learning, ex our, sorry, our signature experiential learning where students will get the opportunity to have field placements, work placements, internships, and also continue with the dual enrollment programs that are already in place. And so we've been doing a lot of research and exploring to see, okay, what would, could this five-year journey look like? And how can we balance out the opportunities for students to engage in core programs and advisory programs, as well as the signature learning and signature experiential learning? And as you see, this is just um, you know, an idea that we have created, and it steps you through the five-year process. But as you can see, when they're in S1, 
most of their time will be spent doing the core learning and the advisory, but they'll still have exposure to the signature learning and the experiential learning programs. And as they move through S2, S3, up to S5, the ratio would change and they would start to get more time to spend in the experiential learning placements as well as doing the signature learning programs. And so as you see, they will get the opportunities as they move through the five-year track. And then we also wanna talk about curriculum. So as I said, we've been doing some research, but also brainstorming and creating as well. And part of that process was to look at, okay, what do we already have in place? And so, you know, we already teach things like um, discovering food and nutrition because part of health and social care is going to be diet and nutrition, which is very important. Um, we are looking at the IGCSE programs we already have as well as first aid and CPR. And so we can take what we already have and build on that. And so already we have students who engage in the Certified Nursing Assistant Program at Bermuda College. And we want to continue with this, possibly add on the geriatric aid certification. But we also have found some credentialing that would be great for our students. So City and Guilds doors offer health and social care certification. And so having these credentials and opportunities for our students would prepare students who are going to step right into the work field as well as giving an advantage of certification to students who are also moving on to college and university. And then finally, our last slide just shows how we want to engage our community partners. Those of you out there that may work in the health and social care space, we wanna invite you in to become part of this process because we need you on our team. When it comes to the learning ecosystems and the work placements and internships, we want to be able to have relationships with um, businesses or community partners that can take on our students. And so health and social, social care, sorry, is a wide um, field. And so we're looking at everything from diagnostic imaging, communicable and non-communicable diseases, KEMH, I mean, even candy stripers when we think about it, we can engage with them and that will also offer students an opportunity for um, their community service hours. And then also when we look at social care programs like mirrors, um, any counseling services, age and disability, child development, we want to engage. And even there are so many that are not even mentioned. We want to invite you to connect with us so that we can work together to build opportunities for our students, because as you know, they are our future. And so next, I would like to introduce Ms. Tamisha Darrell, who is going to share about the STEM Signature Learning Program that we are in the midst of developing at Cedar Bridge Academy. Thank you so much, Keisha, and good evening, everyone. On behalf of the STEM Signature Learning Program, I am delighted to be able to inform you of the work that we have been undertaking um, for the last seven weeks. For us, the Signature Learning Program is surrounded by the idea of if someone walks into these reimagined classrooms, these reimagined schools, what would it feel like? What would it look like? And what would it sound like? And so we have used um, our creative ideas, both with partnerships with the community and also persons that serve um, currently in Bermuda Public School System to kind of come up with some key learning statements, nine, in fact, around pedagogy, curriculum assessment, and a few others that we'll share with you that help to form the basis of a STEM learning program. So STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And the blueprint that will guide our design as we move forward with um, the opening of our signature learning program for STEM at Cedar Bridge Academy focuses around the idea that it has to be personalized, that it has to be student centered, that it has to be rooted and grounded in competencies of 21st century learners. So those competencies will include things like creativity, critical thinking, um, citizenship, character, and ingrained in those competencies will be fused with both the mindsets and the content that students need to focus and to flourish in a world in which we can never imagine. Um, recognizing that we're in the midst of a pandemic, well, what are these skills and competencies 
expertise and knowledge that our students would have needed to have if they at this time had to solve some of these solutions that this current situation um, presents itself presents us with. So in the idea and, and, and with our moving forward with this, when we're looking at pedagogy, we're thinking about an inquiry based and project based approach to learning in which students will be engaged with experts both inside of the classroom here in Bermuda and also overseas and globally that will be working in these local and global partnerships between students, the teachers and the experts, but in an interdisciplinary way. So you might have a specific project or real life experience or real life problem that students will have to engage in and solve and that pedagogy or the way in which they learn it will be directly centered around what is in the best interest of students. So we know part of the vision for learning is a personalized experience. And that was the crux and the focus of our work when we were determining the blueprint for the STEM signature learning program. When it comes to the curriculum and space and time and technology, we were really thinking about how do we reorganize space? How do we use space in a flexible way that is responsive to the needs of the learner? And that would also require reimagining how we would use time. Well, time normally for most of us when we went to school would start at 8.30 and, and finish at 3.30. But in as we approach this new way of learning and this new way of imagining education, our signature learning program has to be one that is adaptable and has flexible time schedules to meet the needs and the aspirations of each and every learner. And technology as well would have to be responsive once again and personalized for the needs of the learners to serve the purposes of both the teacher as well as the student. As we look forward, sorry, to workforce system statements, when it comes to things like professional learning, how will teachers begin to engage with each other in order to develop further expertise, recognizing the value of interdisciplinary learning and the whole idea of interdependent teams in which teachers have to come together in order to plan? in order to teach, in order to provide learning experiences for students that extend in and outside of the classroom. This will require for us a new way to reimagine a culture for learning, not just the physical space of where they learn, not just outside and meaning virtual space and online space, but also the culture for learning in how teachers and students engage. And then finally, ecosystems. So the ecosystem will sit within a wider um, ecosystem of the STEM learning program for all students to be um, successful and co-create these strong partnerships. Now, the next slide that you will see kind of um, lays out some of these specific opportunities that students that engage in the signature um, learning program for STEM will have an opportunity to imagine. So creative technologies, engineering, mathematics, environmental sciences, and I'm sorry, animal and vet science and computer science. But one that I specifically wanted to highlight tonight is the career or the potential career opportunities for creative technologies. So as we know there are going to be um, new roles and new jobs that we would have never imagined, but our students will engage in the opportunities to have exposure to artificial intelligence, into digital multimedia, creative technologies, um, in the internet of things, games, and film and sound production. So the exciting part about STEM at, at Cedar Bridge and our senior learning, uh, our learning program will be an opportunity for students to engage with the sciences, with technology, with engineering, in mathematics in new and novel ways. I'll now turn it over to my namesake, Tamisha Francis Wainwright, who will talk about financial and insurance services at the Barclay Institute. Thank you so much, Tamisha. I appreciate that. Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure and a privilege for me to present on behalf of my team the financial and insurance services signature. Um, I'm going to speak to three statements from from our area and it's gonna be curriculum, space and learning ecosystems. Now you've heard quite a bit of curriculum and learning ecosystems from my colleagues. So I'm just gonna give you some big ideas and some takeaways. So when we look at curriculum, I want you to think about it in, um, in the sense of signatures being personalized. And that is based on the student's interests as well as their passion. Our goal is to keep our students engaged. When we look at learning ecosystems, you heard about partnerships and that it's gonna, it's gonna be collaborating 
with industry, work placements and the like. And I'd like you to, I would like for you to think about it as where is learning taking place? It's not going to just be in the classroom anymore, which leads me to space. When we consider space, again, all learning doesn't take place in the classroom, some, in the school building. Sometimes students are learning out in the field and then when they apply the theory, come back and the theory, they see how it makes more sense to them. So when we think about this moving forward, um, we want to use all the resources on island to um, ensure that our students are learning, they're engaged, and we want to support this. We have lots of resources in Bermuda that we just haven't tapped into because we've been in the traditional setting of the brick and mortar building. With the signature, that space opens wide for us. It's no, we're no longer limited. So um, as it was open, um, our my colleague Keisha Allen Smith, we were open for industry partners from all of these signatures to we're welcoming you in to support us, give your expertise, advise us. If there's something that you see from today that we need to consider and include, we're all open and all ears. So my next, as I move forward, I wanna take a, I want you to look at three different personas of students and, and how things are happening and what it looks like. So as it relates to curriculum space um, and the learning ecosystem and how it's personalized. So in this first persona, we're looking at um, Sally. Sally is about her money and math. She's, if I, it's too much for you to read, but I'll break it down for you. She's excelling in IT, excelling in math. And by the time, when we look at her traditional course, core courses at the top, she's still getting her English, math, science, and the like. She's still get it, meeting her um, goals for graduation requirements, um, community service hours, which can be applied to her career choice, which now means she's networking and she's building up her hours. But as you look, as you go along her journey, um, her personalized pathway from S1 all the way up through S5, she's going to earn certifications. She'll get a certification in um, technology, employability skills, and she has the opportunity to begin her ACCA certification, which is the um, Association of Chartered and Certified Accountants um, designation, and which will help her be a certified accountant by the time she finishes. She can actually start right in this work while she's in S3. Now, what's interesting about for Sally's case is that instead of her doing work placements during the school year, Sally can actually start doing her work placements during the summer so that she can actually start focusing more on the end goal of the ACCA certification. So that's Sally. Now let's take a look at John. John's got a different situation. John's got two parents, his father's an accountant. His mom works in the insurance industry as an insurance adjuster. So he's pretty much set with understanding about his interest in business. And he's pretty much set on, okay, I, my, I speak to my father a lot. I know about accountancy, but I am not too sure about insurance. And his mom's limited with what she could tell him. She can speak to what she does, but she needs him to spend more time with her colleagues who know more about what they do. So now John ends up doing spending more time ex with exploration. So his placement looks a little bit different. His placements during the school year includes testers, going out in the insurance industry and spending time in different areas of the insurance sector to determine which will be his focal point if he was to pursue this as a career. He's spending his time in industry during the summer once again. And he's still walking away with certifications, but now at the end, he has the choice to either do the ACCA or as we've partnered with the um, Bermuda, Bermuda Insurance Institute in the past um, to earn the um, associate in general insurance, which typically you earn that when you finish your degree and you're in industry. But we've had students that have started that in S3 three, through the Career Pathways program and completed that by graduation. So, you know, for him, he is, his personal experience guided his interests. So let's. And that's from his parents. Now let's look at Kim. Kim's mother had an accident, unfortunately, and I hope I don't um, shock anyone, but life happens. And sometimes our students 
have had an experience and it's changed their career path. And that's just really what we go through when students come down and speak to me about careers. Her mom, has, she's wondering, how are you still getting paid? And, but you've been home from work for three months. So she, her mom responds and says, well, for my insurance. And because of her receiving the insurance, she's now, well, I wanna know more about this. So now Kim spends time from her personal experience, she is committed to insurance now. So she's in the insurance during the summer. She is doing placements in the insurance during throughout the school years. She's spending time in her for her career. Um, I'm sorry, her community service. And so now she's already seeking to begin her certification in um, the associate in general insurance from S3. So this is just um, these were just some highlights of how some of our students have situations and have thoughts and ideas surrounding their careers. And because of the signature, we're able to be flexible. You've heard that term and more intentional of how we can structure their day um, to around um, their core subjects and time out in industry. And each person will be personalized based on that student's individual needs. Thank you so much for your attention. Minister, thank you so much for having us on. That was a wealth of information from my colleagues. Once again, thank you, Principal Caesar, and to Ms. Allen Smith, and to, I'm losing my faces, Ms. Allen Smith, and to um, Ms. Frances Wainwright. Thank you guys so much for coming here. And did I say Ms. Darrell? Yes, two Tamishas, I'm getting confused. Thank you so much. So Minister, at this time, um, we definitely want to hear back from you and to, from our community, if they have any questions or um, if they're looking for any more information, but this is the work that we've begun and we refer to them as blueprints, really um, drilling down on what on our vision and what's going to ground the work that we do as um, as we hope to move forward with actually the um, fully designing the, the signature learning programs for next year. Yes, hello. Um, can you guys hear me? I, I was having some issues with my mic just now. Um, that that was extremely informative. I just want to thank all of our uh, panelists who have come on. Um, those people that are listening, I'm sure they're walking away with a wealth of knowledge. Um, and I'm hoping that um, there are some comments that have come in. But um, there are the, one question is that I did want to ask is from and, and all four of you can answer is what what are the perceived or actual barriers that you anticipate in the signature learning programs? And how, as we we as a community, can overcome them? I can start um, speaking to health and social care right now. One barrier is um, the pandemic, right? When you're trying to engage right now with places um, that are operate in the health and social care industry, they're overwhelmed dealing with the pandemic. So you know that might. For, um, cause a little bit of a problem right now, as well as work placements in terms of the limitation of how you can get into those spaces and um, also the confidentiality aspect when it comes to health and social care. But we are working to navigate around that and um, being creative with the ideas we come up with until things start to smooth back out with the pandemic. And Minister, I would also like to say, I, I really encourage the community and Bermuda to be open-minded because this process is a very innovative process. And for many of us, it may be something that we have never experienced, but the way the teams are assembled and the volume of research we are doing and looking at best practices around the world. So it's actually fascinating that a group of us are in Bermuda working together for a Bermuda education system and the work that we are doing is very thorough. So it has to come with a sense of open-mindedness. And also I would always say, trust the process. 
But more importantly, transparency is important. If anyone has any issues, any questions, I encourage people to communicate with members of the transformation teams, the Department of Education, because actually we want to hear your voice as you as we are building this new innovative educational system. Um, for me, I would think a barrier is just re-evaluating or re-communicating the role of learning partnerships to the health, well-being, achievement of our students. The learning has to um, extend beyond the four walls of the school, and the community has to embrace the idea that schooling for our students to be successful involves each and every one of us, whether you are a teacher with, within the school walls or a mentor or you're somebody that just works at Marketplace. Everyone in this country is valuable to contributing to the success of every one of our students. Each and every one of these kids belong to each and every one of us. And so for them to be successful, it calls for an all hands on deck approach. We can't be passive. It's going to it's going to require us to roll up our sleeves. Um, it will require a culture shift in how we see education. It cannot be a, a, a passive endeavor um, for all of us. So I would strongly encourage the community to get involved. Whether you have a young person that's in school right now or they're graduated, my kids went through Cedar the bridge. He's no longer there, um, but I still have a vested um, interest in my country, and that's the same for everyone. We have to have an all-hands-on-deck all approach to reimagining education in Bermuda. We can do it. Our students deserve it. Our country can have an enviable school system. And I think that one thing that we need to think about as we ask the community to do that, we ask them, as um, Principal Caesar said, to trust the process. And when you walk into this process and you trust the process with um, with the with the best interest at heart for this country, come from a place of not thinking outside of the box, but actually saying there is no box. And so we want people to come from a really completely different place to be willing to try things and to be really the, the willingness has to be there to just try something new. It doesn't have to be perfect and it may may not work out exactly as we want it to do, but are you willing to try something new? And as one example is that, and I think we have a uh, definitely Tamisha on this call and a few other people who have worked on these teams literally over the past year. When we look at the national and core priorities that are grounded, that are grounding the work that we're doing right now with the school transformation teams and the signature learning programs, we were looking at learning environments. And one of the things that the team came up with was ditch the desk. Now, I know for some people, they're like, well, what do you mean ditch the desk? But they just went out on faith and said, well, what if, because there is no box, what if we ditch the desk? Now, what does a classroom look like? What does teaching and learning look like in that context? And how might that actually improve the teaching and learning process? But the first willingness was for the group to say, let's do a what if, let's ditch the desk, which for some people may be mortifying because we're so used to having that desk for our young people that to do it any other way does it feel right? You know, I, and, and thank you for those. Um, it's it's interesting for myself as a minister, and I go and I meet people. Um, so many the the amount of people that are enthused about public education and what they're seeing in terms of what the teams are doing, and um, and I know from you guys' perspective as well, the amount of people that have shown interest in being part of the team or even just wanting to know what's going on has been very very encouraging. Um, I know it's it's funny. It's it's I, I speak to um, you know the the part some um, to Karen and the rest of them, and it's you know I'm always mentioning somebody else who said, hey, how can I get involved? Or how can I um, give back? Or how can I, you know, how can how how can my company be a part of what it is that you guys are doing? And so it's being noticed what you're doing, and I glory in your spirit, and I encourage you to continue to do what it is that you do because we will make the difference that our children. Not only not only want and what the public is looking for, but what our children deserve. And, and so I just had another another question here: is to what extent do you have a clear sense of what the signature learning programs may look, sound, and feel like for our young people? What is going to be different? Because one of the things that we find is when whenever, especially when it comes to education, and tip, typically with within government, they say, "Well, we're going to do this different." You heard the groans of Oh, we've done this before. We'll still end up doing the exact same thing that we had. But you know, it, it, we've made a conscious decision that and an effort to say, when people walk into the schools, they will 
notice it will be different. So how, how, how do you respond to that? Excellent question, Minister. I'm actually going to get Principal Caesar to speak to that, um, to that question and to share his perspective. Sure. And, and thank you for that question. And, you know, this is a question where I have a lot of enthusiasm. You know, one thing as educators, and I think of myself as I was growing up, we were in the classroom and to a certain extent, it was a lot of theory. And I think of myself as a modern day educator. And my main focus is to allow students to apply what they have learned to real life experiences. So what will be different in a signature school? Well, we want to ensure that our students are actually having more hands-on practical applications of what they are learning. No longer should you walk into a building and you should see a classroom that has a desk in a row. We want it to be more flexible. We want students to take ownership of their learning. And that means that in some cases, students will be able to move at the pace. We want them to be able to master what they're learning. So when, when we really think of it, we, we want to create buildings. We want to create environments that will foster independent learning where teachers will revert to being facilitators versus always being in front of the classrooms and just allowing students to actually really dig into what learning is and understanding, and we will be there to provide them with the resources and the guidance. Uh, Minister, can I jump in for a second? We have a, a question from Kimberly Harris Todd, who sent a message through Facebook asking, if my child wishes to attend Barclay, but wants to do one of the programs at Cedar Bridge, can that be done? And I'll open um, that up to you, um, the, the panel. Uh, well, I can respond with that and say not not initially. Um, it's something that we we are considering. It's something we have considered and something that we do want to um, implement. But at at this time, as we look at um, implementing our signature programs, with only the two schools. And remember, we're talking about there are ten in total, and so there will be eventually um, no less than five signature signature um, senior learning sig senior schools. But um, at this time. Um, it, it will at this time it, it's not going to be possible but it will be possible as we continue forward with our phased approach to introduction of uh, our reform by education reform and just noting that we have three minutes left on the program um do we have any last already? Already? already three minutes already. come on guys so laurel do you want to give some last comments and then we'll have the minister close it out thank you Wow, that went really, 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 really fast. I mean, I truly thank you all for your time today, particularly my colleagues who, after a long day, we undertake this work. Well, I, I do work for Learning for us full time at this stage. I've been asked to work on this project, but certainly my other colleagues sitting here are not only undertaking this work at least two days a week, but they still have their full loads of, um, of the other work that they do for our young people as we all work in the education system. So I definitely want to thank them for um, taking the time to come on. And I want to thank those who have tuned in and listened. And it's okay if you continue to have questions. It's okay if... Um, if you if you continue to be curious, this is what we're looking for. Thank you, Minister, for having us on. Uh, what we really want is we want you to keep thinking, to keep asking questions, and to stay involved. And there are definitely lots of ways that you can do that. We are on social media, the main platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And so we encourage you to follow our Facebook um, page, Learning First Bermuda. And... Um, and to follow that page, to join, to engage in the conversations, not only do we put up, um, um, give you information about what we're doing here on the ground, but we continue to share with you the kinds of research or the other places that we look at globally to think about how they have managed to do some of these things. And lots of times the questions come up, well, where has this worked before? Because in Bermuda, we want to know, has it been done before? Does it work? This does work in other countries who've taken time to think about how it works in their country. And that's what we're looking to do here. So please follow us on social media. We have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. And you can do that through our website, Learning first bda.com learning first bda.com and so if you look on that website you can see a lot of the work that we've done already you can see a lot of the names of the teams that have been working on this for now um 
practically 18 months. And you can subscribe to our newsletter. We launched the one for this school year just earlier this week to kind of catch everyone up on what has been happening. And every month we send out more information through our e-newsletter. Um, so we do want people to subscribe to that. Um, there are some modules online that you can engage in. And we're looking for fee feedback. And so this process today, um, this what the, what we've shared with you today is not uh, show and tell, look at what we've done. We want to hear from you. We want you to ask questions and we're happy for you to challenge us in a way that will help us to grow and be better at this. And so we want you to take the time and look at that. So um, thank you so much. It has been a really great and brilliant session and um, I hand it back over to you all. Minister, we have about 30 seconds left. What can you give the Bermuda public as our closing statement for this evening? Um, the Bermuda public, wow. Um, outside of God bless, good night. <laughs> uh, thank you for tuning in. Um, this, is, it, this is our third uh, episode of this program and we're looking to grow it. Um, spread the news amongst your, amongst your um, colleagues and friends. This is an, a, a good opportunity for you to tune in and listen to persons and live, ask live questions like um, Ms. Kimberly Harris taught it uh, and find out directly from the experts that are doing the things that are necessary to reform your education system. Um, I just want to uh, wish everyone uh, are to remain safe. Uh, remember, the um, although we've opened schools this, this week, uh, we will be going into um, a midterm break next week. That doesn't mean for us to load, um, let um, let our guard down. We still have to do the things necessary to protect our children so they can uh, continue to be within our schools and doing the things that they love to do and that is learn. And our teachers being there to uh, help them along uh, with their learning process. So I wish you a safe evening, a safer uh, weekend and an even safer next week while your children are out. And I look forward to um, us coming back after the break um, with renewed spirit and um, and, you know, our next episode of this program, I look to see you and talk to you then. Thank you, uh, Mr. Caesar. Thank you, Ms. Darrell. Thank you, Ms. Burns. Thank you, Ms. Allen Smith. Thank you, Ms. Francis Bean Wright. Thank you, Dr. Celestia. Most of all, thank you, Bermuda. Thank you, Bermuda. And we'll see you again on November 4th, 615. Good night. Good night. <laughs>